This is NTV. A very good evening to you. It is just a couple of minutes to nine o'clock. You are in time for NTV tonight. These are amongst our top stories. Tonight, will Kenyans mix COVID-19 vaccines? I will go for nothing else short of the second dose from AstraZeneca. I will not mix. Reactions to worrying admissions from the Ministry of Health. But now we are also hearing the Chinese uh, beginning to say that uh, they might begin to mix uh, the vaccine. So I think the jury is still out on this one. Well, in Kenya, it is a wake-up call. Also tonight, relief for over one million people living with HIV as the long-awaited antiretroviral drugs are dispatched to 31 counties. The clients order what actually they need based on the number of patients they have. Remaining 16 counties to get the ARVs on Monday as the batch that was held at the port is also released. Uh, that standoff, as far as we are concerned, has been resolved and we should be receiving the commodities anytime. And although he admits to being a signatory to a company that would have won a four billion shilling tender, Jubilee Party's vice chairman David Morave was a no-show at parliamentary hearing into the COVID-19 funds mismanagement. Four billion shillings is not a cup of tea. It is the entire, entire budget for fight against COVID. Also ahead, an alarming increase in gender-based violence in Kenyan homes. People do not even want to be say they are assaulted. Even the men don't want to be assaulted, say they are assaulted by women, by their wives, or wives also don't want to say they are assaulted until they reach the remit. A silent problem leaving many bruised and even dead. NTV Tonight with Smriti Vidyarthi. And with me on the sign language interpretation tonight is Flora Atieno. To our top story now, and an admission by the Ministry of Health of a possible delay in receiving the second consignment of the 2.5 million doses of the COVID-19 AstraZeneca vaccine has left thousands with a million questions. The government attributes the likely vaccine delay to the ongoing challenges India is facing with increasing COVID-19 infections, therefore affecting the export of the AstraZeneca vaccine, particularly to Kenya. Helen Aura begins our broadcast. I asked the same because I got AstraZeneca yes. uh, vaccine myself and I was asking if I get the J&J, &J, do I then go ahead? Uh -huh. And uh, the reports that we had, the initial reports, is that it is unwise to, uh, uh, to mix uh, the vaccines. But now we are also hearing the Chinese uh, beginning to say that uh, they might begin to mix uh, the vaccines. So I think the jury is still out on this one. Coming from the man in charge of the Ministry of Health, this is definitely not a comment that would foster the confidence of over 750,000 people in Kenya who have so far received their first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Where exactly does this leave them? Concerns have emerged over the variations in the components of each vaccine if indeed the country were to consider mixing them. If they got the first dose, they are supposed to get the second dose. I will go for nothing else short of the second dose from AstraZeneca. 
I will not mix. For example, I myself have been vaccinated. I've gotten the first dose and I'm expecting the second dose as soon as uh, the date that I was given. So I have a lot of fear if I don't get that second uh, dose of the vaccine. With ongoing talks between the Kenyan government and the African Union, the Ministry of Health also announced that it is now looking to acquire 1 million doses of the single-dose Pfizer vaccine for a month, as well as 1 million doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine for a month through the African Union facility. The talks with the AU are for many Kenyans just that. Talks. Nothing less of action will be reassuring. Chindano hii tulidungwa ya kuzuia COVID-19, tulidungwa. Na tukawa na tumaini ya kwamba, vile wali tuwelezea tutakaa vizuri. Na kweli tukawa na imani na hii serikali yetu. Sasa hile swali ninge muuriza mutahi kagwe ni ya kwamba. Mutahi kagwe ako na madaktari, ako na maprofesa. Na hata alipokuwa kifanya hile order ya hiyo dozi na kuja ya pidi. Alikuwa kijua tunataka dosi ya pili. Sisi tungetaka kuuliza, wewe kama mutahi kagwe, ni kurara unarara kazini, ama ni kuchezea maisha yetu kama wa Kenya. Kenya is set to negotiate the rates of the vaccine with the manufacturers through the African Union facility. Kagwe said that Kenya has only three sources where it acquires the vaccine, through the government-to-government -government acquisition through the COVAX facility, where Kenya had recently acquired 1.1 million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine from India, with the third source being the African Union. It's so painful that uh, many people have not received it. Now we just don't know what's going to happen. Hiyo vaccine zikuji, ikuji hata situ, hata mimi bile ni misimama hapa, nipate kuchanjo. Hiyo ndiyo kitu ya kwanza, inafaa mina wamba ikuje, serikali watie mikazo, ikuje. Wawaje kusema tu watia kuna kuna, watie mkazi hiyo kitu ikuji, hata mimi ni chanjo. Sisi watu ya chini tu chanjo. The government had promised to finalize on the vaccination exercise in 2023 for those in phase three. But given the logistical challenges so far, that may well hinder the set goals. Helen Aura, NTV. Worries and frustrations, completely understandable. The coronavirus situation in the country is not getting any better. Let's now get a check of the situation. And 904 more people have tested positive for COVID-19, raising the cumulative figure to 154,392. Now, the latest infections are out of a sample size of 5,673 tested in the last 24 hours. And this puts the positivity rate at 15.9%. There have been 20 deaths reported in the same time frame as a result of the virus. Seven of them, though, recorded um, occurred rather on diverse dates within the last month, and 13 are late death reports. A total of 105,367 people have recovered, including 88 new recoveries. There are, however, 1,507 people admitted in health facilities countrywide, with 226 people in intensive care. And so far, 778,254 people have been vaccinated with the AstraZeneca vaccine. To the coast now and Mombasa County is staring at another possible lockdown due to the spiking cases of coronavirus infections. According to the county's emergency response committee on COVID-19, the trend in local transmission is alarming and there is a need to escalate restrictions to curb the spread of the virus. NTV's Kevin Mutai also reports that public hospitals are grappling with insufficient supply of oxygen. Watu elfu kumi miane na stinatis. Apologies for that. We'll get the correct version up and running for you in just a moment. All right, well, let's uh, take you to another top story now. And the Jubilee Party's vice chairman, David Morade, this morning failed to appear in person before the Public Investments Committee of the National Assembly, which is investigating the misappropriation of COVID funds at the Kenya Medical Supplies Agency, that's KEMSA. In a sworn affidavit, he did, however, confess to being a joint signatory to an account that stood to hold 4 billion shillings in COVID funds. Olive Burrows with the details. 
We need to uh, weigh out. It promised to be a revealing interview. And so the Public Investments Committee of the National Assembly took the extraordinary step of holding an in-person sitting in the time of COVID-19. After months of interviews, the committee hoped to get down to the business of reporting back to the electorate on the corrupt dealings at the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority that saw persons with no experience in medical supplies walk in off the street and emerge multi-millionaires. But with its last set of interviews on Thursday, the committee readied to reel in a big fish. Except the Jubilee Party's vice chairman, believed to be a close confidant of none less than President Uhuru Kenyatta, was a no-show. Rather than testify before the committee in person as requested on how he came to associate with companies that stood to make 4 billion shillings off the plight of the COVID-19 pandemic, David Murade sent in an affidavit. And he was telling Kenyans publicly how he is coming to appear before us and how he is going to teach us a lesson. On one hand, he is telling us how he is going to teach us a lesson, how he is going to show us how to do things. But on the other hand, he seemed to be, for lack of another word, a coward. 4 billion shillings is not a cup of tea. It is the entire, entire budget for fight against COVID. And yet, he has the audacity. In his affidavit, Murade confirmed that he was indeed a signatory to a joint account open for the purpose of receiving payment from Kemsa. Murade's affidavit, reading in part, Killig Limited and Entech Technology Limited only requested me to be a signatory to Killig Limited's bank account to guarantee that Entech Technology Limited, as the supplier of the PPE kits, would be paid upon Kemsa effecting the anticipated payment on completion of the procurement process, and I obliged. It says that uh, the reason that they brought in David Murade on board was because they knew that he would cause cancer to pay. We are uh, you, looking at uh, issues to do with abetment of a commercial of a felony. But in their affidavits, Killig and Entech Technology sought to exculpate all parties involved from fault for the reason that the commitment letter they obtained from Kemsa for 450,000 PPA kits in a record three days was cancelled for lack of funds. So first it was cancelled, and then after being cancelled, it was revived again. Was it a phone call that made that revival back again? How badly the committee wants the answers will determine whether they will wait to compel the physical attendance of Murade and co, or retreat for the purposes of producing a report. Kenyans want to see this big fish who influenced the payment in cancer. These are the people we are looking for. These people have thought of salvaging Kenya. Olive Barrows, NTV. Elsewhere, a consignment of antiretroviral drugs valued at 1.2 billion shillings has been dispatched to 31 counties today. While 24,000 boxes released are from old stock from a donation of PEPFAR and Global Fund, the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority officials say that the consignment that had been stuck at the port of Mombasa due to a disagreement between the government of Kenya and U.S. agency USAID has been released. It is expected in their go-downs by Friday. And as Leila Mohammed reports, Kemsa was keen to distance itself from the issues that caused the standoff, which many of those living with HIV feared would put their lives in danger. Many will be relieved to know that by the end of the week, 31 counties will have received the crucial antiretroviral ARV drugs, with 16 other counties expected to receive their portion by Monday, April 26th. We have our electronic system, which is called the Logistic Management Information Systems, uh, and this is what uh, hooks us up with the clients on the ground. They assess what they need and uh, they log on into a system based on their needs and they order what they want. The Kenya Medical Supplies Authority KEMSA officials say 
that trucks carrying HIV drugs leave their go-downs each month. And according to their records, each center is expected to have a supply of the life-saving drug for three months to keep the 1.4 million Kenyans living with HIV healthy. Homo Bay County is expected to get the lion's share out of the latest consignment headed to 31 counties, an issue that Kemsa now says each and every county has to key in the specific number of drugs it expects each and every month. Over the last week, persons living with HIV in various parts of the country have complained of depleted stocks. Those probably are specific which we need to go into because it depends on how you report. So it's not something you can generalize and say patients are missing. It's facility specific. With the old stock expected to be at all the 47 counties before the end of April, Kemsa has announced that the fresh stock that was brought into the country by USAID will arrive at their stores soon. They are, however, not able to explain the bone of contention between Kenya and the U.S. government and whether the 90 million shillings tax carry needed paid out before clearing the consignment could be released. USAID is reported to have sought a private distributor of the drugs in breakaway from Kemsa, which handles all medical supplies in the country. We don't have that authority to speak on behalf of the USA nor MOH, but what we can assure you is that uh, that standoff, as far as we are concerned, has been resolved and we should be receiving the commodities any time. According to a letter dated April 20th by the Charged Affairs Ad Interim Eric Needler from the U.S. Embassy in Nairobi, the U.S. government has been in consultation with the Kenya government and other international donors to get medical supplies to Kenyans who need them. The U.S. government states that they will continue to engage Kenya until they find a way forward and much-needed commodities rich Kenyans who rely on them to maintain their health and livelihoods. Kenya officials have acknowledged a shortage of the same drug for children and says that this will be available soon. The information I have is that it's being airlifted and probably should be having it within a week. While three trucks were dispatched Thursday, 28 others had already left to various destinations across the country. Leila Mohammed, NTV. All right, it's certainly a story that we'll be keeping close tabs on. Now, cases of gender-based violence in the country are rising at a worrying rate, with the government calling on the judiciary to expedite reported cases and punish the culprits. Naoma Sampao reports on the latest numbers. All right, we will bring you that story as and when we can. For now, though, let's shift focus briefly to a bit of politics and members of parliament allied to Deputy President William Ruto now want to renegotiate their terms of engagement with the DP with the aim of having more say in his 2022 presidential plans. According to the MPs, the engagement will centre around economic empowerment and their political position in his government if he wins the presidential race, as they believe Ruto stands the best chance to succeed President Uhuru Kenyatta. NTV's political reporter Kennedy Morevi has details of this new push. After three years of traversing the country hand in hand with Deputy President William Ruto, campaigning for his 2022 bid, MPs allied to his cause now want to renegotiate their terms of engagement. Today, at the home of Kikuyu MP Kemani Shungwa, 14 of them met to draft a list of demands to be presented to Deputy President William Ruto, mostly centering on economic revival for the people of the mountain. The MPs say this fresh engagement they seek will play into getting the region a voice in 2022 negotiations. The negotiations will be divided into two parts. Part one is the economic agenda of the 11 counties, and part two is the region's political interest. Tunataka kubadili mfumo wa mazungumzo ya uongozi na siyasa wa nchi yetu. Tunataka mazungumzo yawe sio mazungumzo ya kuzungumzia vya onaviti. Tunataka tuanzie mazungumzo na yawe ya nazigatia tabu na maisha ya mwanainchi ambaye tunamuakilisha. In their push... The MP say they will first seek a structured engagement with DP Ruto in Mount Kenya. This comes at a time when pressure has been piling on the MPs to state what the region stood to gain from their dalliance with the DP. 
So for us, we had to do some pre-qualification and come up with the right person so that now we can say, having identified you as a person who want to go on a journey with, now here are our demands. The economy of a country and the destinies of nations are actually driven by the leader on the seat. You cannot ask the people at the back seat. And therefore, the reason why we are negotiating with, with, with William Ruto is because he has a track record from his ministerial duties, from agriculture to higher education. We want to begin from the trajectory that Mwai Kibaki left. We ask even those members of parliament, if they go back to their own individual constituencies, do they, have, do they carry their aspirations and the mandate of the people whom they are, they are purporting to represent? The Akieleweke allies have however laughed off the move, insisting it is only President Uhuru Kenyatta who will negotiate on behalf of the region. In fact, Kieleweke MPs say the attempt is a show of disrespect to President Kenyatta. We have seen uh, Kieleweke people criticizing us for engaging William Ruto into talks. We want to tell them why are they concerned. They said William Ruto will not be around in 2022. Why are they concerned that we are in talks with somebody they have said will not be around? The conversation in this country is changing and it will have to change. So we are no longer just talking about positions, but talking about uplifting the lives of Kenyans. The government that we elected before and the government that came after the handshake is different. As a matter of fact, the, president, the deputy president has been idle since that time. So he has a lot of unspent energy. Though KG about the political direction in their negotiations with Deputy President William Ruto, all indications are that they will be seeking to have the number two position and a few cabinet secretary positions in 2022. Kennedy Moredi, NTV in Kikuyu, Kiambu County. Still on politics, and the Building Bridges Initiative National Secretariat co-chair Dennis Waweru has maintained that the initiative towards amending the constitution through the BBI Constitutional Amendment Bill 2020 is still on course. Waweru has dismissed reports that the initiative is facing the risk of collapsing after it emerged that different versions of the bill were sent to the county assemblies for approval contrary to the law. Uh, there is only one master bill. Uh, that is out there. Uh, there are no two bills. Uh, and if uh, there are any uh, errors uh, and uh, corrections, minor, those can be done by the Attorney General. And I do not think uh, in any way there has been two bills. What we are seeing here is the usual uh, characters, the usual suspects who are trying to sabotage this process. And uh, we want to tell them uh, that as far as we are concerned, uh, from IBC, there was only one bill that was sent to all the counties. All right, from that, we've got to take a quick breather on NTV tonight. As always, there's plenty more on the other side, so be sure to stay where you are. Mama yao, angalia mikono yangu imeparara. Ala, aibu gani mwanzangu? Kwani umekuwa ukitumia sabuni gani ya unga? Unahitaji sabuni na laini kwa mikono. Unaona Aero Olympia inayeyuka haraka na ni laini kwa mikono yako huku ikiondoa madoa sugu. Na mikono yangu ni laini. Na safi. For a better tomorrow, don't forget to do the one, two, three with Colgate every night. I see innovation and entrepreneurship thriving. I see young Kenyans remaking the world around them, creating lasting solutions to tomorrow's problems today. And I see women just like me at the heart of this revolution. And while others may see symbols and numbers, these girls, see the language of the future. My name is Doka Zowino and I am a co-director at Lake Hub. This looks different. It is. See for yourself. Okay, so it's a photo. Look closer. Photos within photos. What about video? 8K video. Beyond cinema quality. So... You can pull portrait quality photos straight from video. 
But will it last the whole trip? Battery for the whole trip and the way back. This is different. Told you. There you go. Okay, thank you. Hi there. Selena, it's a great thing you're getting so much value for your money. Well, it's important to save as much as you can. Mm -hmm. You save everywhere. Except for here. This is where you're throwing money down the drain. How? On this cleaning product. Impossible. Hapic Tenex. When other cleaners flow away, Hapic Tenex's viscous formula in only one round of application gives you sparkling, clean toilet. Hapic, ten times better cleaning than other cleaning products. And great savings too. Mimi hutumia mbolea inayo itua Elgon the BTDAP kwa panzi wa mimea yenye afya bora. Halafu, natumia mbolea ya the BTCAN ama the BTUREA kwa ukuaji wa mimea bora. Hii imenisaidia kupata mavuno mengi nikilinganisha na siku za hapo mbeleni. Mbolea ya Elgon Thabiti inapatikana kwa viwango vya kilo 10, 25 na kilo 50 kote nchini. Elgon Kenya Limited Watu wa Mombasa Road walikuwa wanashangaa watu wanalia nini? Na hiyo masaa watu walikuwa wamekoa Mathika Road ni the standard time ya kutoka Mlolongo mpaka airport na mjafungiwa na mtu. Kama unatafuta job, acha kutafuta job. Watu wanasema ukisikia mtu anasema yeye ni billionaire under the age of 37, they are lying. The real wealth comes in their 50s and 60s. Watu watu wana t-shirt na magari kwa boss. Watu wa bangu akitisha bikopo yao. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. Let's take you back to that story from the coast now regarding the coronavirus cases. And Mombasa County is staring at another possible lockdown due to the spike in cases of COVID-19 infections. According to the county's emergency response committee on COVID-19, the trend in local transmission is alarming and there is a need to escalate restrictions to curb the spread of the virus. NTV's Kevin Mutai also reports that public hospitals are grappling with insufficient supply of oxygen. At least 10,400 people have so far been infected with COVID-19 in Mombasa County since the outbreak of the pandemic. Over 200 people have succumbed to the disease since last year. 98% of those infected are local transmissions, a situation that has health officials in Mombasa on the edge. Cases of new infections are on the rise, with 67 people testing positive in the last 24 hours from a sample size of 435. We have witnessed an upsurge of COVID-19 in the county of Mombasa and we are worried that if we don't take measures, we will go back to where we were previously. Mombasa County Emergency Response Committee on COVID-19 maintained that it might be necessary to escalate COVID-19 restrictions due to the rising cases. We don't want to get to a point where now we are forced again to make those very hard decisions of closing down places, you know, or looking at cessational of movement to be re-implemented. Public health officials say that locals have dropped their guard against the disease, citing the lack of wearing masks or observing social distance, places of worship, and the public transport have been considered high-risk areas. Last month, we had 762. That was in March. We are 20th April, the as per the last statistics, we are at 752. So obviously we'll surpass the previous month. And that is now what is worrying us, that we need to watch out, something is not right. The county is also in panic because of the numbers, which translates to pressure on available resources and isolation facilities required in the care for COVID-19 patients. We have had to purchase our own oxygen plant in Coast General. But right now we're depending on supplies from every other source that we can. Even with these numbers, I can tell you for a fact it's some kind of a struggle. A report from the Department of Health indicates that the number of males infected are two times more to that of females. As of today, 
a total of 19,093 people have received COVID-19 vaccination in the county. They include 3,394 healthcare workers, 1,149 security agents, 2,319 teachers, and 11,931 members of the public. Kevin Mutai, NTV, in Mombasa County. Right, to another major concern now, and cases of gender-based violence in the country are rising at a worrying rate, with the government calling on the judiciary to expedite reported cases and punish the culprits. Naoma Sampao reports. In just the last few days, a number of cases of gender-based violence have been reported, most of which led to loss of lives, according to the Ministry of Gender. The latest case occurring in the past 24 hours was that of a man from Kitui who raped two children, a 15-year-old and 2-year-old. He then poisoned the 15-year-old after killing the youngest. According to data from the ministry, between January and December 2020, a total of 5,009 cases of gender-based violence were recorded through the National GBV Toll-Free Helpline, an increase of 1,411 cases reported in 2019. GBV Cases recorded between January and June 2020 had increased by 92% compared with the previous year, 2019. Nairobi, Kakamega, Kisumu, Nakuru and Kiembu counties reported the highest cases. Several cases also went unreported. Because uh, of our cultural socialization, people do not even want to be say they are assaulted. Even the men don't want to be assaulted, say they are assaulted by, women, by their wives, or wives also don't want to say they are assaulted until they reach the limit. Kenyans on social media have been condemned for victim shaming. It is something that is very depressing about where we are headed as a country and, and how people even on social media will hide and use this as an excuse and start blaming the victim. I, 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 that one, uh, Waziri... And I'm sorry, I know there's supposed to be decorum, there's supposed to be a way to discuss, but really when you go on social media and you see how Kenyans really feel about this thing, it is depressing. The judiciary is being asked to prioritize reported cases. Unless the matters are determined quickly and the people are punished very quickly, then the others will see that uh, if they get involved in such an offense, they are either removed from the community and that punishment serves as a deterrent. Concern is growing that cases of gender-based violence could soar as the country grapples with the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. Nayuma Sampao, NTV. Right, let's uh, shift focus now and uh, scholar and academic professor Moni Wakesa has vowed to resolve the current strained relationship between the judiciary and other arms of government if appointed as the country's new chief justice. Wakesa, who was being interviewed by the Judicial Service Commission today, says the time has come to take the judiciary to the people. The double PhD holder, Professor Dr. Dr. Moni Wekesa, was the ninth candidate to appear before JSC, seeking to be the new Chief Justice. My life started. If successful, Professor Wekesa informed the commission that he will rely on sociological school of thought as his judicial philosophy, even as he laid bare his first priority once in office. Is to work on mending relationships between the judiciary and the other arms of government. Let the JSC work independently, but we must find some common ground of interdependence with the other arms. The second agenda is to build allies, to take the judiciary to the people. The recent rampart disregard of court orders in the country, especially those targeting the powerful in government, infuriated the scholar, terming it as a concern that needs his antidote while at the helm. It pains me to see courts I respect so much give orders which are trashed. For us to be able to contribute to the obeisance of court orders, I would propose public awareness so that we build allies of the judiciary, pressure groups, 
let us talk to the trade unions. Wekesa was put on the spot of a controversial report he did when he was at the anti-doping task force. Kenya Rugby Union accused him of victimizing them without giving them a chance to be heard. These to the panel portrayed Wekesa as an unfair person who is quick to judge. The World Rugby Anti-Doping Advisory Committee member Mr. Gregor Nicholson came, took two years, did a thorough job, and it was found that you are actually wrong, you know, you know, essentially vindicating them. But you can imagine now you, you, they are being vindicated after a lot of damage has been done. The task force relied on the results of the Daru lab. We did not condemn anybody unheard. We collected information from several sources. Rugby appeared in a very big way. For the academic giant professor, Dr. Dr. Moni, he hopes to be able to make a compelling study of and provide solutions for the judicial arm of government as the next CJ. Vincent Odwur, NTV. And tomorrow, the final candidate to be interviewed for the position of Kenya's Chief Justice by the JSC is Yano Alice Jepkoech. Here's a brief profile. She was born in 1968 in Elgeo Marokwet and earned her Bachelor's of Law at the University of Nairobi in 1993. A year later, she completed a postgraduate diploma in law at the Kenya School of Law. In, uh, in, and in 1995, rather, she was admitted to the role of advocates. Now, Alice is a senior partner and proprietor at Yano and Company Advocates and has been since 1995. In 2013, she was the attorney for the county government of Elgeo Marroquet for a year. From the year 2000 to 2006, she was a commissioner for the Constitution of Kenya Review Commission. And in 1992, Alice was the legal advisor at the Kenya Industrial Estate Limited. All right, time for a breather. The business news is lined up next for you on NTV tonight, and I'll be delivering that. So stay with us. Introducing Nestle Saragro, growing up cereal. Each bowl of Nestle Saragro contains the goodness of cereals and nutrition your child needs to blossom. That's one less thing to worry about. Nestle Saragro, it's all good, Mom. Your gums hurt? Yeah. Does your toothpaste contain sage, eucalyptus, mirror, chamomile? All that in one toothpaste? Yes, try Colgate Herbal. Colgate Herbal contains nature's best herbs and Colgate's fluoride technology to give you strong teeth and healthy gums. Ah, Colgate Herbal. Colgate Herbal for strong teeth and healthy gums naturally. Now introducing new Colgate Charcoal Gentle Clean for a naturally fresh and clean mouth. No matter what's going on in the world, and start listening today. Buddha, are you watching me again? I see what is in the world. Buddha, you don't have these bundles. When you don't have a customer, you don't data save Buddha. Checky, when you come to my data, I call. Mimi na itwa zuri kutoka safari kom. To me, a data save kupunguza speeds ukidibamba na highlights za game. Kisha, ongeza speeds wakati wakuteka ma customer. Dial star 544 hash. Select 8 for bundle management. Then 2 for data save. Select 1 if you want to save bundles by reducing your speed. Or 2 if you want full speed for faster downloads. Jichanue and take control. Like every mother, I'm worried about dangerous insects, especially mosquitoes, which spread diseases like malaria to my loved ones. This year, I'm not afraid. I'm using Mortin Doom. Mortin Doom All Insect Killer provides protection in seconds. Not even a single mosquito is spared, because even one mosquito bite can cause malaria. Mortin Doom provides protection in seconds. Tips on fighting malaria. Use Mortin Doom insecticide regularly. Sleep under long-lasting insecticidal mosquito net. Clear blocked drains and get rid of stagnant water. This public message is brought to you by Mortin Doom. Zero malaria starts with me.
If there's one thing that all soaps do, it's wash. From buckets to basins, bathrooms to streams, and everything in between. All soaps wash. Yes, but Protex is different. It's reinvented formula with flaxseed oil. Boosts your skin's natural anti-jump defenses by 10 times more, protecting you against 99.9% .9 of jumps. So what keeps us healthy? Protex. Protex. Good health starts here. NTV Business News, in association with Cindy. All right, welcome back. Business news now and in what marks a landmark ruling in the fight against abuse of buyer power in Kenya. Majid Al Futaim Hypermarkets Limited, which operates the Carrefour chain of supermarkets in Kenya, has been given 30 days to amend contracts with suppliers. In its ruling, the competition tribunal has directed that the retail chain amends all supply agreements, expunging all clauses which result in abuse of buyer power, including the removal of provisions for application of listing fees, application of rebates, transfer of commercial risk to the supplier, and unilateral delisting of suppliers. Well, this determination follows an appeal by Majid Al Futaim Hypermarkets Limited following investigations conducted by the Competition Authority in a case which involved Orchards Limited. Majid Al Futaim Hypermarkets has also been directed to pay Orchards Limited 289,482 shillings as a refund for rebates deducted from invoices from 2017, 2018 and 2019 regarding the supply of probiotic yogurt. Now, local hospitality industry players have called on the government to consider allowing hotels and restaurants to reopen immediately, arguing that strategies put in place to flatten the COVID-19 curve, such as lockdowns and closure of restaurants and hotel establishments, are punitive and have significantly affected livelihoods of over 2 million hotel and travel industry workers, rendering many of them jobless. The tourism and hospitality industry was the worst affected by COVID-19 and the adverse effects of containment measures in 2020. According to data from the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, the sector contracted by 58% in the third quarter of 2020, shedding 7 billion shillings as activity was grounded by the COVID-19 restriction measures. <laughs> Some stakeholders now say the sector is facing imminent collapse if nothing is done to reverse the current restriction measures. Over 2 million people are employed within the tourism-related businesses in Kenya. Unfortunately, these are all under threat. We really urge the government, let us save these jobs, these 2 million jobs. Allow international and domestic travelling to continue with either negative PCR certificate or a negative rapid antigen certificate. Despite the activation of a 6 billion shilling stimulus package to keep the sector afloat, stakeholders say there is need to allow businesses to continue operating to meet their cash flow needs and utilize capacity. We really urge and request the government to consider at least for one year a PAYE waiver for all the hotel workers, allow restaurants to continue operating as long as those health and safety COVID measures have been put into place. Allow meetings and conferences to go on. We have to save these jobs. The sector is also urging the state to consider reintroduction of loan moratoria for borrowers who are still grappling with the adverse effects of the pandemic. No, Julian's Amboko, NTV. Now, Kenya Airways and Congo Airways have signed a two-year partnership agreement aimed at enhancing synergies between the two amidst the tough operating environment that many airlines find themselves in due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The agreement was signed in Kinshasa on the last day of President Uhuru Kenyatta's three-day state visit of the Democratic Republic of Congo. The airlines will partner in, among other things, aircraft maintenance, training and the sharing of excess capacity. Embedded in the agreement is a route and code sharing provision. The chief executives of the two airlines signed the agreement in front of their respective heads of state.
tomato traders in Cajado County are now calling on the county government to cushion them by imposing tax relief measures as tomato prices in the county rise by more than 50% in the last one month due to a shortage in the supply. Now, the acute shortage of tomatoes has been attributed, attributed to the maize importation stalemate, pitting the country against neighboring Tanzania, which imports tens of tons of tomatoes every day. Kenya banned maize importation from Tanzania, citing high levels of aflatoxins, and in turn, Tanzanian farmers have withheld selling tomatoes to Kenya, protesting the ban on maize. Well, currently, a 60-kilogram crate of tomatoes is now ranging from 8,500 shillings and 9,000 shillings, and that's up from the 3,000 shillings. <laughs> Sasa hiyo ndio anatuambia hata wanaweza kula na roi. Kaona tuachia nyanya hapa. Hiyo nyanya inaenda inaipa na siku mbili ama tatu. Hiyo nyanya inaharibika. Unapata sasa nina hii biashara iko chini. Niko na maloni. Ile maloni nimechukua. Hmm? Inalipwa na hii biashara ikiwa ikiwa chini hivyo. Kwa hivyo unapata sasa ile ile biashara ni ile loni nimechukua. Biashara na iko chini. Tunatengemea sana especially mahoteli na mikaawa yenye ilifungwa hata yenye naomba serikali ifungue mikaawa tupate kuuza bidhaa sokoni All right on that note we've got to close the business news don't go far we'll be back after this quick commercial break NTV Business News in association with Sendi What does it take to move a nation it takes Sandy. If there's one thing that all soaps do, it's wash. From buckets to basins, bathrooms to streams, and everything in between. All soaps wash. Yes, but Protex is different. It's reinvented formula with flaxseed oil. Boosts your skin's natural anti-germ defenses by 10 times more, protecting you against 99.9% .9 of germs. So what keeps us healthy? Protex. Protex. Good health starts here. Invest in the new fully furnished Grand Suisse suits situated on the serene Riyadh Hills in Kisumu City. Each unit has a modern ensuite bedroom, a spacious living area, and a modern kitchen. At only 5 million Kenya shillings, a buyer is guaranteed a monthly income of 40,000 shillings, plus free access to facilities at the Grand Royal Swiss Hotel. Call us on 0720-927-238. With the Stay Soft Refill, saving money is as easy as snip, pour, mix with water, and shake. Stay Soft Refill. It's two liters of Stay Soft for up to 30% less. Asante. Hey. Hey. Hebu ni kuulisi, hii maneno nasikia ya pima ya elimu, inaweza kuwa na mnakani mtu anachuka. Prosesi ya kuchukua nishu wana nsikava yote, nilahisi, hata ni kona kava ya gari yangu. Kwanza, unajaza proposal form kama hii, na uijaze wewe mwenyewe. Na kama haujui kusoma, uijaze na mtu unaemuamini. Hakikisha ile majibu umepatiana, ni sahihi na ni ya kweli. Pia, dibitisha, insurance cover imeangalia masirahi yako. Na usiwahi sign proposal form, ambayo haijaandiko kitu chochote. Pia, ukubuke kujitolea fotokofe yako. Oh, sasa, wacha nianse hiyo process. By the way, ukisubmit hiyo proposal form, uhakikishe umepatiwa policy document. Uisome na uyelewe. Hiyo ndiyo dibitisho ya kuwa unabiba. Ujume huu umeletua kwako na IRA. Shushu, wamesema hakuna arusi. Kwa nini? Apana, mahibizikani. Mahibizikani, 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 mahibizikani. Miki Brian Rikot to stream you endo. Nasema, safari kwa mikola 500 MB free kila siku. Sasa tunaweza kustream hiyo endo. Hai, shushu. 
get 500 MB free kila siku and never miss a moment. At the first sign of pain, you need a solution that you can trust to provide effective relief and is gentle on the stomach. Try Panadol Advance for relief from headaches, body aches, and fever. With Panadol's Optizob formula, the tablet gently breaks down in the stomach, quickly absorbs, and starts providing pain relief in 15 minutes. For fast and effective pain relief that you can trust, try Panadol Advance. This has been Medifax for Panadol. As the world marks Earth Day this year, the United Nations is calling on countries to pay greater attention to climate change mitigation, as data indicates that the impacts of climate change are worsening around the world. A newly released report on the state of global climate by the World Meteorological Organization indicates that 2020 not only closed as one of the three hottest years on record, but also recorded a 1.2 degrees Celsius rise in average temperature. NTV's science editor Zainab Wandati explores this. Kenya is no stranger to climate extremes. Floods and droughts are almost a permanent fixture in the calendar. But 2020 was a year like no other. The water levels in the Rift Valley lakes rose to unprecedented levels, drowning hopes and livelihoods. The flooding in Kenya was just one among tens others reported across Africa last year with devastating impacts. In total, at least 98 cyclones were reported across the world and many other incidents of heat waves and wildfires. By the end of the year, the world had warmed by 1.2 degrees Celsius. In Kenya, the temperature rise was just a little under one degree as Lodwa, Mandera, Lamu and Mombasa recorded higher than average temperatures. Climate disruption is here. I urge everyone to take the message of this report to heart. Let us all commit to act to stabilize our climate. Scientists say that in order to avert the worst of climate change, global temperature rise must be limited to 1.5 degrees Celsius. That means reducing global greenhouse gas emissions by 45% from 2010 levels by 2030 and reaching net zero emissions by 2050. But the world is running painfully behind schedule and some scientists argue that 2050 will be too late for net zero emissions. And as the world marks Earth Day today, the UN is calling on countries to increase their climate action over the next 10 years and also align COVID-19 interventions to the global sustainable goals. Kenya says even though the country has little to do with climate change, it has suffered some of the worst impacts and will be taking more steps towards climate-proofing its economy. Zainab Wandati, NTV. Well, this comes as there are reports from uh, international media houses that uh, a rare tropical cyclone is approaching Tanzania and could become the first cyclone to make a landfall in the nation in modern records. Tropical cyclone Jobo, located near Madagascar in the South Indian Ocean, is currently equivalent to a strong tropical storm with winds just shy of 100 kilometers per hour. Well, climate change is, of course, real. We've all got to uh, play our part in helping the situation. All right, this is NTV uh, tonight. Sports News is up next. International School welcomes parents to enroll their sons and daughters for April and May 2021 intakes. Class 8 graduates, enroll now to realize your dreams. Call us and visit our website for more information. Brookhurst International School, dedicated to excellence. Like every mom, you want the best for your child. Happy birthday. You make sure she knows the joy of sharing happy moments with family. 
And when everything comes together, you above all others will share the taste of success with her. Blue Band tastes like mama's love. Watu wa Mombasa road walikuwa wanashangaa watu wanalia nini na hiyo masaa watu walikuwa wamekoa Mathika road ni the standard time ya kutoka Mlolongo mpaka airport na mjafungiwa na mtu kama unatafuta job acha kutafuta job watu wanasema ukisikia mtu anasema yeye ni billionaire under the age of 37 they are lying the real wealth comes in their 50s and 60s watu watu wana t-shirt na magari kwa boss watu wa banko akitisha bikopo yao <laughs> Welcome to the sports news. Kenya Pipeline made it two wins out of two matches today at the ongoing Africa Women's Club Championship in Kelibia, Tunisia. Kenya Pipeline beat National Alcohol of Ethiopia by straight sets of 25 to 15, 25 to 17, 25 to 7 at the Isa Ben Nasser Arena. Coach Paul Gitao maintained his decision to field a different team from the one that beat Asak Mimosas on day one. For the second match, Coach Gitao fielded experienced duo of uh, Ruth Jebnetich and Triza Atuka with Betty Sifuna starting as the libero. In tomorrow's fixtures, Pipeline take on Duans as Kenya Prisons play SC Faxien. Uh, Daily Nation reporter Samuel Gasharira spoke to Coach Gitao after today's win in Tunisia. All right, it's uh, all systems go for ARC Equator Rally's pre-event, which gets underway at the designated 5.4-kilometer Loldia stretch in Naivasha tomorrow. The pre-event schedules entails an early morning free practice ahead of the much-anticipated qualifying stage from midday. This will be followed by a shakedown and a ceremonial start at 4 p.m. The qualifying stage will determine the start order on Saturday for the ARC cars. KWS Training Institute has been a beehive of activity over the past two days, during which national cars and ARC registered entrants were inspected. Over 30 cars underwent pre-event checks. Ever wondered what the lives of national team players are like when they're not on the field? Well, tonight we look into a day in the life of the Kenya national women's football team captain, that's Dorcas Shikobe, highlighting how else she earns a living. Yeah. When she is not busy defending league titles on the pitch or representing the country in national assignments, Dorcas Shikobe, or Doc as she is popularly known as, is an everyday citizen trying to make ends meet. On a typical weekday, you will find her in Thika town, tucked away in a food kiosk where she works as a cook. It is a local stopover for low-income workers within this area. Here, Shikobe prepares soup, not as fancy as her captain title on the pitch. First, you clean kwanza. You lazima clean less first. Alafu, ndio kazi, ndio alete food. On top of her tiring work, she has to train daily. Training comprises of two hours in the middle of her morning shift with her club, Thika Queens, which is in the Kenya Women's Premier League. Chikobe earns a guaranteed 400 shillings a day while receiving her monthly allowances from Thika Queens. Harambe Starlets only pay her when she is on assignment. At 31 years old, Chikobe is a mother of one. She had to leave her daughter in Nakuru where she worked at a flower farm. Na mine zasema ni kijobu. 
sasa kama umetoka unaenda kutafutiana uwezi feel juu kila weekend nikipata time huwa naenda kumuona so pia yananielewa Shikobe has won the captain hat since joining Harambe Starlets in 2015 she featured in the Africa Women Cup of Nations in 2016 and 2018. However, the Sekafa contest in 2019 is the closest to her heart because Kenya beat three-time champions Tanzania. Shikobe, who comes from a family of five brothers and two sisters, says there is still hope for women in football in Kenya. Sai naona iko different juu upcoming naona wana fight. Si watu wa kusukumwa kama hapo nyuma. Sasa hii wana fight wanajua kuna kitu wanataka juu wameona wengine wameenda nje kutoka hiyo national team. Una feeling kama wa, ni a threat kwenu hiyo nyinyi mmekuwa hapo for a long time. Ama nyinyi mmeshikilia mna maintain. <laughs> Sisi tume maintain lakini pia ina heart juu uko hapo na mwenye wako nyuma yako anatoka na anaenda through. Lazima uhatike kidogo lakini nikutake tu ni kawaida imekuwa ni kwetu ni kawaida juu chanzi kikujeo mwingine anaenda uwezi mkazia ama uwezi zuia it takes sacrifice to reach shikobe's heights driven by hope the starlet's captain juggles between a number of things to ensure that her dreams are achieved it's what makes her stand out it's what makes her a star lokader natiom and tv Wow, captain and a cook, would you ever have known? I'm further afield now, and Tokyo Olympics organizers say they may put off an announcement on how many fans can attend the Games until May or June, as surging coronavirus infections play havoc with preparations. Athletes are also likely to face daily virus testing rather than once every four days as originally planned. The International Olympic Committee has lauded the organizers even as it works with National Olympic Committees to vaccinate athletes. We are encouraging uh, and assisting and helping uh, uh, there the NOCs and all the Olympic uh, teams uh, to uh, get uh, vaccinated. And in fact, uh, we can uh, see very good uh, progress uh, there. You know, uh, the, the, the great number of uh, National Olympic Committees uh, uh, have already announced uh, that their, their athletes uh, uh, will be vaccinated. Uh, including uh, United States uh, with their uh, big team uh, and uh, a number of, uh, of uh, others. Other, some teams have already be 